Um, the NBA season is over, but the off season is just getting started. The we don't know who these niggas are. Who are the who are these niggas draft is in four days. But I want to talk about some of the topics, the storylines headed into this off season. So I'm going to do my Scott's top five off season storylines, and we'll just go quickly around anybody who has a comment on that. So we're going to start it now. My number five NBA off season storyline is the futures of Donovan Mitchell and Mr. Clay Thompson. Does Donovan Mitchell really want to be in Cleveland? That he can extend his contract this offseason. Um, he will be officially a 10-year vet, so that will push him with 10-year uh, vet service. I think he can make up to 275. Damn, yeah, 200, it's been 10 years. Wow. Crazy. $275 million. Does he want to live in Cleveland? I would live in Idaho for $275 million, but I'm also not Donovan Mitchell, who he has options. Or is he going, you know, I'm cool. He's going to let this contract go out, and he's going to hit the free agent free agency next year and go to a team that he really wants to go to and that is the garden the mecca even though i don't think a combination of him and jalen brunson works at all but what's going to be the question on that and also i think we're going to see the swan song for clay thompson clay thompson is going to be very humbled in these contract negotiations now it could go one of two ways uh, Mike Dunleavy could be forced by Joe Lacob and Peter Guba to give him the, the legacy deal. You were one of the founding fathers of this new run. You're going to have your jersey up. You're probably going to have a statue with Steph in there. You, you, we're we're going we're gonna, to – we're probably not a statue. You're probably going to have like a little bus like you do Scotty Pippen and United for this. Steph's probably going to be the only nigga with a statue outside. But you're going to have your jersey retired. You're going to be in there. You're going to the Hall of Fame, first ballot. We're going to give you this money that you really don't deserve just because of service time. Or I believe they're going to be like, look, Clay, we love you, but we need to stand to get better. We need to maximize on the last couple of years of Steph Curry and try to get back in that championship window. And I think there's going to be a team out there that's going to front load a lot of that contract, maybe the Orlando Magic, which I think would be actually good for them. And I think Clay Thompson's career as a Golden State Warriors over as, as, as we know it. Pat, what do you think about the futures of Donovan Mitchell and Clay Thompson? Um, I hope Clay Thompson gets up out of there. Um, I think that um, either Orlando or OKC would be the move. Um, I think that Clay is still Clay's still a good basketball player. It's not like Clay's terrible. He's just not what he once was. But if he can get to a team like the Magic, who clearly needs shooting, and also with these teams, you would actually win. Like I think the Magic could be in the Conference Finals next year, especially if they get more shooting. And Paolo is, you know, who he possibly could be in France. Continues to grow. Um, I think they would still need maybe a lead guard, where? maybe still, huh? What path? From where? What you mean? You said from where? No, he called him Franz Wagner. He wasn't no, no. saying from France. Nigga. Oh, okay. I about to say, yeah, you going overseas <laughs> too much, nigga. No, 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 no. No, Franz, Va- Franz Wagner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you yeah, going overseas yeah, too much, nigga. Now you ain't not France. France, yeah, no, France, 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 France. But, 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 like, and and you would still win. And if he goes to OKC, shit, that might be a final team next year. It might yeah. be a final team regardless. But like, if Clay wants to win. I agree. If you want to spend your career in Golden State, which and and also the thing about that is like Golden State, I don't think if he got disrespected by the three years sixty million, I don't think he's getting three years sixty million from Golden State. Yeah, but I do think he could get from two Orlando. years yeah. fifty million from Orlando or maybe OKC because they just have the cap space to do it. And also, I mean, Clay comes with a certain cachet. You're gonna sell jerseys. It's still Clay Thompson. It's a household name. People know who he is, and you have a better chance to win in both of those situations. As far as Donovan Mitchell goes, problem with Donovan Mitchell is I don't know where you go. Um, I think Cleveland is a cool situation for you. Um, I think that maybe if you're Cleveland, maybe you don't like the Garing and Mitchell pairing. I think that if you're Cleveland, you probably try to do everything that you possibly can to uh, hold on to um, Donovan, especially with his performance in the playoffs. I know they lost, but he was putting up 45, 50 balls, and he wasn't completely healthy. Um, so I think you try to do your best to model that team around Donovan Mitchell because when I look at just like what's out there, unless he forces the trades, I don't know, L.A., or maybe he wants to go to Brooklyn or something like that. Like I don't really know. But going to Brooklyn, like does that even put you in a better position – than where you are right now, if you're trying to actually win, like you could say, he's turning 30, and I don't know how many more peak years Donovan Mitchell has left. So I think Donovan is a more interesting case. Like I don't really know what to say about that. It kind of depends on what he wants to do. But Clay, I'm looking at Orlando, and I'm looking at OKC as places where I would love to see Clay get to because I think that he could really make an impact on winning for both of those um, franchises. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot of 
options there. I w- it would not. It would be very, very funny to me if come October is like, and at guard, number 11 from Washington State University for your Chicago Bulls, Clay Thompson. That would be big Bulls, nigga. Just to sell jerseys. Just to sell the Clay Thompson jerseys, and this nigga averages nine points a game. And they front load them. They give him a contract. Like, 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 like 90, like 90 million or something like that. That, that, that would, that would blow me, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. But I do think there's going to be some young team uh, that's going to pay him what he wants. It just will not be in Golden State. Um, Let's go to my number four. Unless banging Dante, y'all have anything y'all want to say on that? Okay. No, no, no. Thompson will be a no man, no magic. Yeah, I think he I think he'd be an Orlando Magic, but I would go to OKC. If he went to OKC, I think they'd be the favorite to win the title. Especially after what he's got Caruso. We'll break that down in the local while. But my number four uh storyline of the offseason to watch is the future of a former bull, Mr. One Jimmy James Buckets. Jimmy Butler, uh, he's up for a contract extension, a massive contract decision. I'm uh, extension. Now I'm not 100 percent sure that the Miami Heat want to pay him. Um, but uh I think that I ultimately do think that Miami would pay him to stay because I don't know where else they go. And I feel like they've already invested enough in Jimmy. I think Jimmy is very beloved out there. Jimmy has 100% embraced the Heat culture. Um, But it wouldn't shock me if he goes back to Philly. I think that's been a team that's been uh, brought up a lot. You know, something I feel that Philly has regretted choosing Tobias Harris over Philadelphia. I mean, over uh, Jimmy Butler. We know Jimmy Butler still has a lot of love for MB. They're going to look for a running mate to go with MB. And I, I do think that that was a good pair when they were together for that very, very short time. So I'm very interested to see where he's going to land up. I think it's going to change a lot bit about the balance of power in the Eastern Conference. I'm going to ask Bang you this question because I know you said you're anti heat culture. Do you think he's going to stay in Miami or do you think he's going to be you know, hooping somewhere else? I don't think there's a choice in the matter for Miami to have anybody else. I just think that they, you know, you know Pat Riley being Pat Riley and Jimmy being Jimmy. Um, but where, uh, unless you plan to go younger, what you going to do? Um, I don't think they're gonna do. If you lose Jimmy Butler, that's a wrap for the team. So they need they need Jimmy to stay relevant. They need him to keep them, you know, playoff ready. Um, so no, I think Jimmy Butler will be a Miami Heat um, this season and for the end of his career. Pat, what you think about Jimbo? Um, I wouldn't want to pay Jimmy because he don't be playing basketball half the time. Um, so I wouldn't want to pay him his money. But, I mean, like Bang said, what choice do you really have? The problem with that is, like, the Heat are getting very close to that Bulls area where, like, you're not really that good, but you're not that bad. Like, I don't think – granted, yes, they had a magical run uh, two years ago when they went to the finals. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen every year. I think they'll probably be and, – and also the East is getting better, you know. So I think that they'll probably be maybe f- fifth or sixth seed um, continuously. Uh, so – I think that you're getting dangerously close to being where you don't want to be in the Eastern Conference. And I don't really see what other moves um, you can make. Maybe you can go get a Donovan Mitchell down there somehow. Maybe. I don't know. But um, I guess you got to pay Jimmy the money unless Jimmy literally says, I don't want to be here anymore. Trade me. Um, because we know how Jimmy acts when he wants to get traded, uh, as Jeff T told the uh, story. So, I mean, hilarious. I don't know. Yeah, hilarious story. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want to pay. I think Jimmy's, what, 35 now? Really wouldn't want to pay that man sixty five million. Hell no. Three six years old. Really would not want to do that. But like you said, if I'm the Heat, what choice do I really have? Unless, unless I'm trying to like completely rebuild, and I don't think that Pat Riley wants to do that. So yeah, yeah definitely not. Uh, we are about ten minutes away from the local hour. Mikey will be joining us. We're gonna be breaking down the Alice Caruso trade that brings uh, the sixty nine guy uh, Josh Kitty over to the Bulls. We're gonna talk about is a teardown on the horizon. Rumors of Zach Levine might be going to Sacramento on a two-team deal. Uh, the, the the Chicago Cubs got blasted in Queens. Uh, not in Queens, actually on the north side. By the, by the boys from Queens, by the Mets, 11-1. We're going to talk about other chances to win an NL Central out the door. And then we're also going to talk about an article that came out from Tom Haberstraw. Shout out to Tom Haberstraw. Uh, I was on a Hoop Collective, not Hoop Collective, but uh, True Hoops a couple years ago. Shout out to him. Um, about 
is Michael Jordan's defensive player of the year in 1988 fraudulent? We're going to talk about that later on, too. But let's go to my topic, my storyline number three of the NBA offseason of things we need to pay attention to, and that is the New York Knicks. Knicks coming off an amazing regular season, finishing as a number two seed, making it um, to the second round, losing to the Indiana Pacers in a tough game seven at the Garden. Uh, they were pretty much on their last um leg you know josh hart was injured uh even they would have lived even they'd advanced these conference finals jalen brunson wasn't gonna play out the break in his hand a lot of things big big expectations over there in the garden but the question is can they land another star i don't know who's available but can they land another star to add with the jalen brunson to add with josh hart um i i don't know if they if they we I don't even know who's available, but I think that they need to try to get somebody. I want to say this in the most unhating way that I possibly can to New York Knicks fans, because as far as a lot of New York uh Knicks fan Knicks teams go, I actually thought last year's team was pretty enjoyable. Um, they need to get one. You don't want to be stuck in the phase of you had a good team and maybe you overachieved a little bit. I do not believe they're capable of winning an NBA championship as constructed, no matter how much Knicks fans and their deluded minds want to convince you that they are. This is a superstar driven, driven league. I think that Jalen Brunson is a star. I think he's great. I don't think you can win a championship with him as your number one, or at least not with a guy who's a number two, who's on his same level. But if you do that, you have to have a team that's as deep as the Boston Celtics, uh, per se. And, like, we just talked about the Celtics for the first 30 minutes. They're the measuring stick, and not just the Eastern Conference, but the NBA. What can you do to lap them? They're not – they'd have got smacked up, too. So, they ha- – I don't know if they if they can, but I do know that their front office has shown that they'll be active, and I think they'll put in calls to see who they can add to this to try to take to the next level. Because if not, I I wouldn't be shocked if there's a little bit of regression next season if they can't keep the same roster. Uh, Pat, what do you think about the Knicks' chance to try to get a star and to try to take it to the next level so they just don't stay stagnant in that second round mode? Um, the thing about the Knicks is you can very easily fuck this all up by trying to go get a quote-unquote star. Um, I think maybe the play, if you could go get Mikael Bridges, I don't know how like realistic that is, but you go get Mikael Bridges, put all the Villanova guys together. But at the same time, like I don't know – how you get that without giving up maybe something that you think was like uh, uh like a heart and soul of your team for lack of better words like a josh hart or somebody um i think that really you try to retain most of your guys obviously harkinson probably will have some money out there waiting for him so he won't be back uh but maybe get another big um you know you get randall like we forget julius randall wasn't healthy like julius randall is a all i know people laugh about randall but randall is an all nba level guy that wasn't there that wasn't there in the um playoffs so and I think the OG thing is just smoke. Obviously, you know, if you're going to trade for OG, you kind of got to pay him. I think he's a super guy. He's a he's a star in his role for your team. Obviously, he has injury concerns, but when he's on the court, he's a star in your role, in his role for for your team. So um, I think it's a tricky offseason for them because they could very easily take this and fuck it all up. Uh, but I think you kind of just got to keep trucking forward, man. Like, you know, bring the um guys back together and hope that you also have internal <coughs> – hope that you also have internal um um development and, you know, guys can get better and stay healthy and you can make a deeper run next you season. Need, you need some water, nigga? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you all right, Doc? You all right, Doc? <laughs> yeah, you all right, Doc? Doc? And we need to get you all in the post. Damn. You, you sounded like me a month ago, nigga, bro. Yeah, I was dying. <laughs> But let's go to uh, my number two storyline, man. Uh, this is probably outside of my number one because obviously it's in that order. Pretty big. Uh, Mr. Paul George, uh, he is going to be an unrestricted free agent. Him and the Clippers are uh, reportedly not on the same page as far as contract negotiations go. And James Harden is also a free agent, but all people expect for James Harden to sign a multi-year contract with the Los Angeles Clippers to stay over there with Kawhi Leonard and Ty Lue with the new contract Ty Lue did and opening up the Intuit Dome over there in Inglewood. Um, but the questions are, the certainty for Paul George isn't there. You know, a lot of people are linking him to the Sixers. I was thinking the same thing, especially after his appearance on uh, NBA Today, the NBA Finals halftime show 
a couple days ago. Um, but now we're hearing that the Sixers don't really have much interest in Paul George. And they're going to be looking elsewhere to try to add to Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Uh, maybe they heard his podcast where he was talking that I really don't really care about winning championship type stuff. PG is a very interesting fellow. I actually consider myself one of the actual few Paul George fans in my age. Because a lot of the young niggas really love PG. I'm a, I like PG. PG's a cool guy to me. I think he's really good. Who on the internet just hates this nigga? But those comments definitely had me like, okay, this is why they slander you. Um, I I ultimately think that one of two things are gonna happen. I think that he's either going to stay in Los Angeles, which I do probably that's my favorite right there. That I do think they're gonna him and Steve Ballmer, Lawrence Frank, all those guys are gonna sit down and find a deal that works for both of them and keep him in Los Angeles. And I ultimately do think he wants to stay home. But taking the Sixers out of it, it would not surprise me if he made a return trip back to the Indiana Pacers. And I'm not 100% sure what the Pacers cap situation is, but we do know that he still loves Indy and they have a good team. And I think that would be a good piece to add there as well. But once the smoke clears, I do believe that he will be back uh, for the Clippers. Dante, I know you wanted to talk on this. What what you think about this this Paul George situation where he might land up? end up? I think Paul is another player that, you know, the Orlando Magic should take a serious look at. I think, it, you know, that's a team that needs uh, a veteran presence uh, to add to that young talent that they have. And I know, you know, the knocks that we have on Paul George, but I think him going down to Orlando with him saying what he said about, you know, not really caring about championships and all of that. The pressure isn't there, but he will still have the team that's good enough for him to, you know, make a run in the East. Will they knock off Boston? Probably not. But I think that's a situation that if you're Orlando and you're looking to add something to those young players, that Paul George is a guy you should definitely look at. Uh, if I'm Ballmer, as much as I, you know, want to sell tickets in the, into a dome, at the same time, we haven't had any success with this with this uh, rendition of the Clippers. So we can let Paul go and then we take that money and put it somewhere else. And I might be interested in looking at that because they're going to, they're going to, you know, make some moves and they're going to still sell tickets. It's um at least those first couple of years, you still got that uh that new car smell with the stadiums, and a lot a lot of people going to come out to see uh, the Intuit Dome. So um, I think if uh, like I said, if I'm the Magic, I, I make it run at Paul George. The Magic is actually an interesting team. I, I wouldn't mind that fit at all. I think that that would be I like that a lot more than I like Clay Thompson. Uh, Pav, you covered the team just like I did. Uh, what's your post on the situation? What do you think Paul George is going to ultimately win? I think ultimately he's coming back. Like I just can't see Paul George at this stage in his career. You know, he's trying to do his media thing as well. We just started his podcast. Obviously, he was um, on TV doing the finals. I can't see at this stage in his career as a guy who's from L.A. or from Palmdale, has always wanted to live, well, play in California, who's playing in California to leave and go to Orlando or to leave and go to Philadelphia. I just can't see it, but um, if it does happen, I actually have another team, and I would love to see him on. I would love a sign and trade with Denver for Michael Porter Jr. Ooh, that would um, be- I think that – now, I doubt that actually would happen, but I would love a sign he and might, trade. He might have to stop league offices from that happening. That would be really but I, good. But I, would, but I would love a sign and trade for Michael Porter Jr. for uh, Paul George for Denver. Um, I think Denver, I think if you want to upgrade one position on Denver, it's Michael Porter Jr. Because when he got to put the ball on the floor, oh my God, it don't work God right. God, God, if 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 he can't just catch and shoot, God bless. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, I think he comes back uh to LA. But if he doesn't, it has to be a sign and trade. Because I know um I know what you said, Dante, but I think they're so deep in like the luxury tax that I don't know if they could even like use the money for real that they would even like how much money PG would even create for that team. Yeah, how much I, they would even use. I think I read something that the Clippers just can't take that money and use it on something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah because they're so deep in like the um tax. So I don't even yeah. know like what like what's really the point in you even doing that. Like I think the best okay. way, like granted, like I've I've started the two K thing with the Clippers. I think the best way is to just re-sign them all and hope that in a couple of years they you, you can like trade them all off for like something in like the future. Um, but yeah, I think the move is to just re-sign in um LA. I just think that they got to figure out the number that they want. Um, I think that you know uh. PG probably wants the Kawhi number. The Clippers probably don't want to give him the um Kawhi number, and that's probably where the uh, discussion is. But I think that they ultimately figure out a number, and he's back in um LA next season. One hundred percent, man. Let's go to my final, my number one NBA offseason storyline to get into that has to do with the James household. Mister Ramon himself, LeBron James, who was last found. Uh, dancing with his elbows in there at the Kendrick Lamar concert, like all the country. Um, 
and his son, Bronny James, who was oh my asking. God. <laughs> I know Pav don't want to talk about it, but we got to talk about it. My number one story, uh, meet the Jameses. Where are they going? Where are they going? Is LeBron going to stay in L.A. for the last couple years of his career? Is he going to find his way somewhere else? Where is Bron? Bronny's the biggest name in the who are these niggas draft in four days. Are the, are the Lakers going to take him at 55? We've heard rumors about Phoenix actually wanting him, that they don't. They have a plan to develop Bronny. Uh, Rich Paul came out and said that, oh, Bronny and, and, and LeBron are not a package deal. Uh, we're, we're not thinking about that, which, come on. I love Rich Paul just doing his job, being a great agent. But it's like the same thing when he said that LeBron had nothing to do with the Lakers coaching search. I was born, but I wasn't born yesterday, my nigga. I'm not. I. 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 I don't. I'm not buying that whatsoever. Um, my personal opinion, I think both of these niggas end in L.A. Hey, that's just what it smells like to me. I think LeBron will announce he's come back to L.A. Probably a little short two year deal, and I'm not saying he will because Le, LeBron's probably still on. He doesn't know, but it also would not shock me if he tells me. Once this, if he tells us once this contract is over, I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna actually finally retire, and then he can have these next couple seasons. Appreciate LeBron why he's here, and then he can really get the King Griffey Jr. and King Griffey Senior uh, situation going on here. That's what I believe. Unfortunately, is the number one topic of the offseason. I actually got to give LeBron some love. The nigga's been in the league what 21 years, and he's still the topic of conversation. He still has his firm grip on franchise decisions, which he's never seen before. I'm going to get to all three of y'all in a minute because I want all y'all paying before we bring Mikey in. But, bang, I'm going to go to you first. What you think about where these two will go? They're going to go whatever, wherever Bronny get drafted at. I think that's the plan. Because um, here's the thing. We keep talking all this shit about L.A. and the J.J. Reddick stuff and all of that. But if LeBron, if we listen to LeBron, LeBron still wants to win a championship. Can he win a championship in L.A.? No. If he were to join the L.A. Clippers in some type of capacity, could they win it? Yes. Could Dallas win with LeBron James? Yes. I'm naming those two teams because I've seen things around Phoenix. So he, Phoenix is one of the teams that he's worked out with. Um, and Dallas is reportedly allegedly interested in Bronny. So wherever Bronny goes, I think LeBron goes uh, because there's no guarantee with the roster that they currently have right now that L.A. is going to be any better than they was last year, and we know that Bronny is not going to be a difference maker on any team. So why does it matter at this point? So that's why I'm at with it. Uh, Dante, go ahead, and then we'll close it out with Pat. Uh, they're going to, they're going to ride off into the sunset in LA. Um, I know we talk about how poorly managed the Lakers have been over the past shit, 10, 15 years, uh, especially since Dr. Buss took, uh, let go of the reins. And, uh, I think this is going to be one last terrible decision by the Buss family. Um, and they're, they're going to pick Bronny. They're going to give Bron his deal and then we're going to see where it goes. So I think that's what's going to happen. Shout out Damien in the chat. Bron still want a ring like I want Rihanna. Yeah, nigga, I want Maya Jamma too. We not getting that. But, uh, Pav, I know you, your Bronny is one of your least people you like talking about. But what do you also think these two are going to land? <laughs> they're all coming back to L.A. Uh, well, they're all coming to L.A. Uh, the thing about Bron is, you know, people talking about, oh, he's going to leave and take this much money. Bron still wants his money. He's, I, I guess he's been vocal about the fact that he wants a max. And if he's trying to buy a team in Vegas, he kind of need that money. He go, he go, he go. Kind of need that sixty million dollars per year if he thinking about buying a team in Vegas. That's probably gonna um, be the expansion team in a couple of years. So I think they're all coming back to LA. Um, I just can't see the man saying, "Yeah, I want to leave Los Angeles, California for Dallas, Texas." I just don't think at this stage of his career he wants to do that. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. But if I had to place a bet, I think he stays here with the Lakers. Um, and also, the Lakers will be dumb to let to like let the man go. At the same time, like it's LeBron James. He sells jerseys. He sells tickets. Um, even if you do pick up Bronny, like it's get grand. It's still a business. Like you'll you'll sell Bronny James jerseys or uh, whatever. So you what will you it? will sell no, Bronny James jerseys. You, you, will, you will you will actually niggas. sell Bronny James jerseys. Bro. They will, but they're gonna be rocking twelfth man jersey, which is which is nuts. It's nasty, but like whatever. You, it's gonna sell. Same. 
you're gonna sell James Jr. jerseys. He's gonna be the only 12th man ever who to have his jersey on sale at the fucking team store in Crypto.com Arena. You can hear the disgust of Pappy as he He's gonna be the only 12th man brother. ever. But the, the victory cigar. <laughs> LeBron, Ronnie, in the case.